Today we're going over lesson 10.1, volume of rectangular prisms. First thing I want to talk about, what does volume mean? What do you guys think volume means, Romario? Sound. He says sound, let's see. He says sound. What is it, Gore, what do you think? Inside of shape. Does anybody else, Ben? Depth, if it wants to write. Depth, anybody? Fernando? How much something, okay. How much something can hold? Does everyone agree with at least one of these definitions up here? Yeah. yeah. So, in fact, a lot of them are right. The only one that I can't fully get behind is depth, but it is involved with volume. It does include volume. It's just that's not all volume is. But, for example, sound. When you put sound on, it fills up the room with sound. Oh, yes. Not with literal music notes, but the room is now filled up with sound. It is the inside of the shape, but it's not just any kind of the inside of the shape. It's how much the inside of a shape can hold. So for example, if we were trying to find the volume of a water bottle, it would be telling us how much the inside of the water bottle can hold. The way we do it is we multiply length times width times height. And we've also seen it where it could be length times base times height or whatever, or it would be, yeah, whatever. It would be that. And so we have that. This is how we do this formula. And it's going to make a lot of sense once you see it. It's going to make sense when you see it. So let's look at how this works. If I have this, I have a length of three feet, a width of two feet, and a height of two feet. So I'm just going to write that on the side. What is my length, Melanie? Yeah, perfect. Three feet. Remember, it could also have been the two feet. It doesn't matter. But still, three feet. Rafi, what is the width? Two feet. And then, Gloria, what's the height? Two. And we know our formula is length times width times height. So it's going to be three times two times two. Who can tell me what three times two times two is, Anita? It is 12. So the volume of this box would be 12 feet cubed. So we can remember that it's cubed because a lot of these, and it's not just with cubes, but they're shaped by a cube. It is now, it is now a three-dimensional figure. It is now a three-dimensional figure as opposed to a two-dimensional figure. So I want you to look at this and we're going to be writing some of it down. So the volume V of a rectangular prism is produced as a product of its length L, width W, and height H. So we could also write down this important part I want to point out. It's the same exact thing as base times height. Because once we find this bottom base portion, just like we know how to find the bottom base, we just count how many times it goes up. So to show you this, here I've got some... I got some cubic units that they drew, right? This side is six. This side is six. So if that side is six and that side is six, what is the base of it? What would the base be, Daniel? No, what would the base be, Romario? 36. And that's when it's only one stack high. But now we're two stacks high. So what does it become? If each level has 36, what's the next one, Daniel? 72. And we got that because we had our base amount, what Romario said, the 36. And then we, had, we multiplied it by how many levels we went up. It's the exact same as doing length times width times height because that's what Romario did, length times width, 6 times 6. So a three-dimensional figure has length, width, and height. But this is important. A prism, specifically, is a three-dimensional figure with two parallel bases that are congruent polygons. Who would like to break that down for me in their own words? Elsie gave us a great run over. She said it's a three-dimensional figure. We have to have two parallel bases. 
they have to be the exact same. So she's completely right. Can these bases be both on the same side? Like, does it, if I have my shape, is it gonna be good for me if I have a side here and here that's the same? I need my bases to be the same. I can't have it just be my like random sides. They have to be top or bottom. That can be turned on its side. In fact, rectangles have every one of them is parallel congruent. We've got this one right here that's uh, parallel congruent with this one right here. We've got this top one here that's par with the bottom one. Then we can't see it, but we've got the whole back area here, which is compatible with this whole front area there. So we know that those are all congruent. The reason that this matters to us is because we wouldn't be able to solve length times width times height without knowing that they are congruent and without having the information. So we saw this. We decomposed the figure. Here we have our base times our height. That's our first layer right there. And as Romario said, for this one, we get the area of the base to be 36. So I'm actually just going to put base for 30, or the B for 36. And then we have our height. We don't know what our height is. Let's say our height is 3. We would then multiply that 36 times 3, and we would get the full volume. I believe it's 108. In your notebooks, I want you to find the volume of this figure right here. So we've got a rectangular prism with a length of 12, width of 10, and height of 6. Nathan, what did you get as your answer for the volume? He says it's 120. Oh, 720. Sorry, I was like, okay. He says it's 720. What method did you use to get that number? Perfect, so you did 12 times 10, and then you got... 120, right? Yeah. And then you did 120 times 6. Is that 720? Excellent. So he broke it into pieces. First he found his base, and then he multiplied it by his height to get the answer. Romario, did you do it a different way? Yeah. Exactly. So that's another way we could do it. We could do the 12 times 10 times 6 without having to necessarily break it up right there and then and any sort of thing we can do. Whichever ends up being easiest, because sometimes it's easier to do the multiplication here faster, sometimes it's not as easy. So, now, here is another rectangle. I want you to find the volume of this rectangle. While we're waiting for people to answer, I wanna talk about which is the base? Which of this figure is the base? Is it? Number one, number two, or number three? Which one's the base? What do we think, Elsie? Three. She says three. What does anybody else say? I want to see Oswaldo. Eight. Eight. Eight? eight? No. Number one. Number one. Okay, got it. Number one. Does anybody else have anything? Michelle? She, she thinks it's three. Daniel? Three. What do you think, Ben? He thinks three. Any of them can be the bases. As soon as you just tilt... As any of them can be the bases. Because as soon as you put it on its side, it's now got a different base. As soon as you put it there, it's got a different base. So all that matters is that when you pick a base, you stick to that and then multiply by the height. Do not mess up that. First things first, can I multiply a whole number and a mixed number together? No. Can I multiply a mixed number and mixed number together? No. I have to be able to multiply fractions or decimals. I can multiply fractions or decimals with each other, but because it's a mixed number, it's mixed and we can't do that at least as well without having to do like 7,000 steps. So we're going to convert these into improper fractions. Daniel, what is 3 and 1 fourth as an improper fraction? 13 fourths. Excellent. He multiplied that 3 times that 4 to get 12 added it to that 1 to get 13, and our denominator stays the same. So what would the denominator of this second one be, Andrew? Probably 2. Yeah, our denominator stays the same. And who can tell me what the numerator is going to be, Malia? 25. 
Perfect. 25. Because we've got 12 times 2 is 24, we add it to the 1 and we get 25. So we're going to multiply this. I have 8 over 1 times 13 over 4 times 25 over 2. Let's do some cross-canceling before we get too far into this business. I'm going to get rid of 8 and 4 and turn it into a 2 and a 1. Is there anything else I can cross-cancel? No. What do we think? No. There is one more thing. Oh, yes. The 2s. So we can cancel out that two to make it a one and this two to make it a one. You can cross cancel anything as long as it's one on the top and one on the bottom with multiplication. So we now have ended up with, we have now ended up with one times 13 times 25. What is 13 times 25, Gore? 325. Excellent job. Now sometimes, just like in our last chapter, we're going to have to find the missing dimension. This is when we isolate our variables. We have to find that missing dimension. So instead of being given all of the length, width, and height, we will be given one of the, or two of those options and also the volume. So for example, this problem, I was given a little rectangle. I know what my uh, width is, and I know what my length is, and I know what my volume is, but I don't know what my height is. Who can remind me of the formula that we use to find the volume of rectangular prisms? Elsie. Perfect. Volume equals length times width times height. So we've got some of those. We don't have our height yet. So we're just going to bring that down again. Volume, and we know what our volume is. 84 meters cubed. And then we know we have got 4 and 6, which would make up the length and the width. We then get 84 is equal to 24H, because all I did was multiply. And what's that last step that we need to do? What's that last step? Michelle? Isolate the variable, and how do I do that, Gore? I do not minus 24 on both sides, Nathan. Divide, because it's multiplication. So I divide by 24 on each of my sides. 24 divided by 24 goes away. I am left with H equals 84 divided by 24. When we do that long division, 84 split into 24 parts, 24 goes into 84 three times, that would be 73, 1, 1, we bring down our 0, and that one goes in five times. So our height is 3 and 1 half, or 3 and 5 tenths, or any sort of thing. I was right the first time. I thought it was 72, but I got all weird. Okay, 72, which is fine because there we have it. 120 makes more sense anyway. But there we've got our problem. We still get our height to be three and a half. Now, I want you to go to page 741, and you're going to do numbers A, B, C, and D. Melanie, what did you do to solve A? Do we agree with this math? Yes. 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 It's excellent. We see that. She used length times width times height. She made it into a base first and then multiplied it. That's all great. And I also want to point something out to you. What kind of shape is this? What is it, what is it called, Rocco? It is a prism, but what kind, uh, Gore? It is a cube. And notice, five times five times five is five cubed. Oh. Remember, for example, four times four is four squared. We got six times six times six times six is six to the fourth. So we see this. This is five cubed, a.k.a. five cubed. So now, 
The next one, Emerson, what did you do? <laughs> do we agree with his math? Uh, yeah. Excellent. I was writing it down as he was doing it. He said he makes six times ten. He sees his six and he sees his ten. So he's decided that side is his base. Totally fine. He gets 60. Then he multiplies it times 4 to fill it up. And he gets 240. For C, Oleg, what did you do to start C? So first thing Oleg did was he just filled in the formula. We have volume. We don't know what it is. Find the volume of a container that is 4 inches long, 5 inches high, and eight and a half inches wide. First things first, what is eight and a half inches as an improper fractional leg? Exactly, it is 17 over two. So now when I find it, I've got four over one times five over one times 17 over two. Can I cross cancel anything here? Jaden? Yes, I can cross cancel my four and my two. Bye bye, that becomes a one. Bye bye, that becomes a two. Now, our denominator is going to be over one, aka, do we care about it? No. no. And then we just have to multiply across. What is two times five then, Nathan? Oh, that's two times five? Yes. Ten. Ten. And what is ten times seventeen then? Uh, Rocco. Perfect. So we get volume is equal to one hundred and seventy. Fernando, here's a missing dimension problem. So I want you, so Fernando, what did you do to solve this? Excellent. So he multiplied seven times three and then divided 94 point, or, or 94.5 by 21. That's excellent. I'm gonna show you how he, we would write this out in a nice way. We have our volume. We have our volume is equal to length times width times height. My volume is 94.5. That's equal to length is 7. Height, we have that is 3. And the width, we don't know it. Does it matter if I wrote it as 7 times 3 times W? Does it matter? No. It's the... it's one of the properties that we can rearrange however we multiply or add numbers. So then we have this. 7 times 3 is 21, so we get 94.5 equals 21W. We are going to divide by 21 on each side. And what did you get then for your width, Fernando? He got 4 and 5 tenths. And he is correct. So that's all we need to do with this. You're multiplying and dividing with these to try to find the volume. I want you guys to do guided practice numbers one and two. So once you have finished your work, I want you to turn to your partner and see if they got the same thing as you and see what steps they followed. So we see this, it says at the bottom, we look at our question first. It says find the amount of water that can be contained in the sink. The reason I wanted to mention that is because it's exactly what Fernando said at the beginning of the lesson, how much something can hold. So how much something can hold is volume. So do we know what the volume is, Lucy, in the beginning? No, we don't. So we get volume is equal to. And then what is volume equal to? What's the, what's the formula first? Like, what is it? That's, is that the answer? So it's going to be 25.25 and 25 hundredths times 19 and 75 hundredths times 10. So that's what it's going to be. You can set it up. And we did the math. And Lucy, what did you get as your answer? Excellent. That's exactly how we do this. That's exactly how we do this problem. Now, 
Whenever we multiply, we line it up on the side. I always save 10 for last because you're just putting a zero at the end of your number or whatever it is. So I save that for last. I would do 25, 25. I moved my decimal twice. 1975. And then I'd multiply 5, 2, 2, 1, 6, 2, 12. Magic zero. Oh, I don't want to do that many magic zeros. So after enough time, we add them all together and we get 4,986.875. What about problem number two, Miles? What did you do for problem two? I'm so confused on how to find like, the missing dimension. So you're confused about how to find the missing dimension. Let's look at this. First, Miles, what is the missing dimension? Which one don't we know? Yes, so we do not know the length. So we have our volume is equal to length times, and then the numbers that we do have, we, oh wait, we have, we have the volume. So it's 126 is equal to length times 7 and 7 eighths times 2. What is 7 and 7 eighths as an improper fraction? 7 and 7 eighths is an improper fraction. Anita? Perfect. So we get 126 times length times 63 over 8 times 2. Excellent. Is there anything I can cross cancel here? No, I can't because you can only cross cancel. Actually, I can. I can because it's 2 over 1. So I can. 2 in the 8. That goes away. This becomes a 4. So now I'm left with length times 63 over 4 is equal to 126. This is why I had you guys show your work last time. Because now we've got this interesting step and we have to do this. What is the first step that we are doing to solve this problem? What would be the first step that happens? Rocco, what do you think? Yeah, we do need to isolate the variable. So how do we do that? So we could be dividing. What would we divide by? Sure. We can divide each side by 63. Right? So that goes away. I would be left with 4, or I'd be left with L over 4 is equal to 2. Because 126 divided by 63 is 2. Now what's my next step? What's the next step I need to do? Michelle. Perfect. I multiply by 4 on each side. That cancels out. I get length is equal to 8. If I also noticed here, there's a couple different ways that we could do this. Whenever you want to isolate a variable and there's one number, if there's a fraction next to it, so length times 63 over 4, multiply both sides by the reciprocal or reciprocal. 4 times 63. Cross cancel, cross cancel, that's gone. The other side would be 126 times 4 over 63. That's not supposed to be all over 63, over 63, over 1. So we'd be able to cross cancel that. We'd get 1 and 2, and then we'd end up with our length being 8. So our answers are 4, 9, 8, 6 point. 875 as Lucy nicely found for us and the missing dimension would be 8. The way you check your work for missing dimensions is you just multiply. So I would multiply 8 times 2 times and 7 and 8 sevenths we know is 63 eighths and we need to see if that's equal to 126. Let's cross cancel some stuff. I get an 8 right up here at the top. So I'm going to get rid of that 8, and I'm going to get rid of that 8. So it just becomes 2 times 63. Is 2 times 63 126? No. Yes, it is. So we checked our math, and we know it's correct. Your homework is page 743, and it's numbers 1 through 10. Now... I don't want you to do number nine. So, no number nine. 
We're gonna do number nine together as a class. So we're gonna do nine together. A glass container is showed or shown is filled to a height of 2.25 inches, two and 25 hundredths inches. How much sand is currently in the container? What are the numbers I'm gonna be multiplying by to find out how much sand is currently in the container? Rocco? Uh, five, four, and one half. Five, four, and one half, and three. Do we see a problem with this? What's the problem with it, Hannah? Um, if we multiply that, we get the total volume. Yes. Uh, yes. So if we need, that gives us the total volume. But instead, we only are up 2.25 spaces. So this is only up 2.25. The rest of it becomes the 3. So then we multiply it. Then we multiply it 5 times. Four and one half is nine over two, and two and two fifths, or two and twenty five hundredths, would be five and one fourth. Five over, yeah, five over four. It's more than five over four. It has to be. Yeah, I was looking at that. Let's see. Don't steer me in the wrong direction. I get nine over four. So, what can I cross cancel then? What can I cross cancel, Jenna? She says nothing. Exactly, we can't cross cancel anything. These nines are at the top. We can't cross them both. This two and the four, they're at the bottom. We can't cancel both. They have to be across. They got to be crossing. So then we just do our math. We're going to get something over eight. Two times four is eight. What is nine times nine? What's nine times nine, Rafi? We've got 81, and we got to multiply that times 5. What is 81 times 5, Lucy? We get 455. Excellent. Great job. So that is how much sand is currently in the container. I can never hear the people in the back. It's 405. So if we did this, if we did this, I want us to simplify. I would want us to simplify. We could simplify. They're not both even numbers, so we know we're not going to end up with a nice pretty uh, we're not going to end up with a nice pretty number. We're going to have a decimal. How many times does 8 go into 400? How many times does 8 go into 400, Rafi? 50 times. And we have that 5 left over. So we're going to have 50 times and 5 eighths. So we could say 50 and 5 eighths, which is also equal to 50.625 if you did the division. How much more sand could the container hold before it overflows? So now, which variable am I changing from my original problem right here? Which variable am I changing? Michelle, 2.25. And what am I going to change it into? I'm not going to change it into 3. That's the common misconception, though. What do you think, Rocco? Not 2. What do you think, Rafi? Into just 0. 0.75 or 75 hundredths. Because that's the difference between 2.25 and 3. So that's the difference between 2.25 and 3. Yet again, I'd multiply this whole thing. I get 5 over 1, 9 over 2. 3 over 4. I can cross cancel some of this stuff. I can cross cancel the. Nope, I can't. I can't. So then I would get. I would get. So we get 135. That's not a decimal. Over 8. We get 135 over 8. How many times does 8 go into 135? So how many times would 8 go into. Yeah, how many times does it go in, Rafi? If we did our long division, we would find out that 135, it goes into it a total of 16 times. It goes into it a total of 16 times. That is 128. We now have a difference of 7. So I would have 16 and 7 eighths. And then it asks me the last question. What percent of the container is filled with sand. What percent? 
When we do percents, do we remember what it is? Yeah, it's 100. So, it's going to be equal to something out of 100. We don't know the percent. So, it's what percent, and this side is our percent side, is equal to, and what numbers go on the other side? What numbers go on the other side? We said 50 and 5 eighths. And on the bottom, we need what number? On the bottom, I need what number? Two. So for this bottom, we want to see the whole volume. The whole volume of this would be... So I got this bottom part here by adding our two parts. The part of sand in the container and the part where we could add more sand. When we do fractions, it's part over whole. Then we would just do our cross multiplication to make it work. We multiply that times x, this times 100, and then we would divide because we'd have 67 and 4 eighths, which is also 1 half. x is equal to, and I'm going to make it 50625 with a point right there. And then I just divide each side by 67.5, by 67.5. And so for my answer, I would get, for my answer, I would get 75%. Perfect. Thank you, everybody.